Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. We've been speaking about May 6th and the elections happening across the UK a lot recently. But now the election's over, let's take a look at the results and the fallout of the election. Now, at the time of writing, not all of the results are in for all of the elections, so we'll be focusing on England's local elections with a specific focus on Hartlepool's by-election. We'll be discussing the Scottish parliamentary election in another video, so subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when that video's out. Also, we're really close to half a million subs, so we'd just appreciate your support. As I mentioned, on Thursday, the UK held a bunch of elections. There were Welsh and Scottish Assembly elections, English local council elections, mayoral elections, police and crime commissioner elections, and a by-election for the constituency of Hartlepool, which is the one we're going to focus on here. The by-election was triggered after Mike Hill, the incumbent Labour MP, resigned in March over sexual harassment allegations. In 2019, Hill won with 38% of the vote, the Conservatives came second with 29, and the Brexit Party came third with 26. However, in this election, the Conservatives won with 52% of the vote, with Labour coming in second with 29%, and Samantha Lee, an independent, came in third with 10% of the vote. This is clearly a really bad result for Labour, and at least a pretty good one for the Conservatives. But it's hard to overstate quite how bad this is for Labour, because the Conservatives won by a 23-point margin as a governing party in a by-election. We mention this because historically, incumbent parties don't do well in by-elections. To put this in context, the largest incumbent swing in a by-election before this was a 12% swing in 1945, and this was nearly double that, at 23%. So why did Labour do so badly, and why did the Conservatives do so well? Well, let's start with some Hartlepool-specific reasons, and then try and work out the more widespread national trends. For starters in Hartlepool, obviously the incumbent Labour MP was accused of sexual harassment, which isn't a good look for the Labour Party, or the local party more specifically. Also, Paul Williams, the new Labour candidate, might not have been the best choice. He had previously been elected as MP to the neighbouring Stockton South constituency in 2017, and as an MP, he was a Remainer who campaigned for a second referendum, before then losing his seat in 2019. Given that Hartlepool voted 70% leave in 2016, fielding a Remainer candidate who just lost a nearby seat maybe wasn't a great idea. He also has an interesting social media history, with one person finding this tweet from him in 2011. And on his first day as a Labour candidate, he put out a tweet with the word MILF apparently written out behind him in thumbtacks. The local Labour council was also dogged by bullying accusations, and was seen as ineffective, in part because of cuts to local health services. Also, Labour might not have been helped by a strong showing from Samantha Lee, an independent who won 10% of the vote. The final Hartlepool-specific reason that might partly explain Labour's poor results is that this election was the same day as the Tees Valley election. The current Tees Valley mayor is Conservative Ben Hutchin, and he's pretty popular, so there's a chance that Jill Mortimer, the Conservative candidate for Hartlepool, was helped by his supporters turning out and voting for her too. Anyway, those are some Hartlepool-specific reasons for this result, but the result could also possibly be symptomatic of some wider national trends. Normally, we wouldn't recommend drawing too many wider conclusions from a single by-election, because they're subject to so much local noise. But considering the Conservatives won with a 23-point lead as the incumbent party in a by-election, and alongside massive Labour losses in local councils, but it's probably big enough to think as statistically significant. A smaller lead could perhaps have been attributed to the Conservatives enjoying a vaccine bounce, thanks to the success of the UK's vaccine programme. But it also seems that the Conservatives have successfully monopolised the Brexit Party vote. If you simply add together the Conservative and Brexit Party vote totals from 2019, you get 55%, which is almost exactly the same as what the Conservatives got this time round. Obviously, we can't know that all of the Conservatives' new votes came directly from the Brexit Party, but it seems safe to conclude that at least the majority of the Brexit Party voters would have gone Conservative. 
A Servation poll in Hartlepool last week, which actually overstated Labour's support, found that 77% of Brexit Party voters went on to the Conservatives and only 5% to Labour. If this pattern holds nationally at the next general election, Labour are in big trouble. It's also worth noting that the Brexit Party to Conservative swing puts pretty big Labour MPs at risk of losing their seats, including Ed Miliband, Yvette Cooper and Shadow Defence Secretary John Healy. To make things worse for Labour, some council results suggest they're also losing votes to the Lib Dems. Hendon in Sunderland, for example, saw a 30-point swing from Labour to the Lib Dems. Now, council elections are only tiny affairs, with only a few thousand voters, so it's probably not safe to draw any big conclusions, but it should still worry Labour. Ultimately then, what does this all mean? Well, at a minimum, we can infer that so far, Starmer's electoral pitch to Brexit voters has not worked, and there's limited evidence to suggest that he's also losing votes to smaller Liberal parties, like the Lib Dems and the Greens. Well, I'm bitterly disappointed in the results, um, and, you know, I take full responsibility for the results, and I will take full responsibility for fixing things. We have changed as a party, but we haven't set out a strong enough case to the country. Very often we've been talking to ourselves instead of to the country, and we've lost the trust of working people, particularly in places like Hartlepool. I intend to do whatever is necessary to fix that. And I intend not only to take responsibility for the results, but to take responsibility for fixing things. We've just had a bitterly disappointing set of results last night. This goes way beyond a reshuffle or personalities. It's about focusing the Labour Party on the country and making sure that we close the gap between the Labour Party and working people. And these results will have two obvious conclusions. More infighting in the Labour Party and more political capital for Boris Johnson. Because while you occasionally hear reports of Conservative MPs being unhappy with Boris Johnson, whether it's about lockdown, crony contracts or his flat redecoration, no Conservative MP is going to have a go at Johnson if he keeps winning elections. Because, well, he guarantees them a job. What do you think though? Is it too soon to make a judgement about Starmer's Labour Party? And what do you think about the results in your local area? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video, including a video on the Scottish parliamentary results. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.